<laughs> All right, so hear me out. If there are watermelons, why aren't there fire melons, air melons, and earth melons? The Ella melons. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, what up, people? It's to hear more, and I am Patrick Cloud, and welcome to another episode of The Internet is Undefeated. Do, 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 Internet is undefeated. Internet is undefeated. Internet is undefeated. Internet is undefeated. Internet is in it. Internet is in it. I went into mumble rap. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> not even mumble <laughs> rap. You wasted no time being one of those people I hate. It's 2019, SoundCloud. <laughs> we have a guest today. Hello, Ooh, Wally hey, Muhammad. Hey, what's up? It's your favorite ex employee. And, hey. and your jacket. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You look you like a, drip. a fired. <laughs> Sheriff with that mustache. Right oh, now. come on. That's pretty good. You, just you whole, almost stumbled. Yeah, out. I didn't know if I wanted to go sheriff or state trooper. They're about the same. <laughs> state but, trooper. Yeah. I laid uh, off. Guys, it's from the Goodwill. First sure. minute of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's natural. Yeah. Yeah. Yo. Welcome. Oh, thank Before you. Before we get started, thank you for man, we me. definitely want to uh, give a huge shout out to Universal Pictures and the new movie Ma. For yes. sponsoring this episode of The Internet is Undefeated. Oh, yes. And it's actually going to be a Ma takeover for the next few days. All of ADD programming is going to be Ma themed, which is ba, awesome ba, ba, ba. because now we have a chance. We, we're doing a special edition dad jokes in a haunted mm-hmm. house oh. where we tell your mama jokes. Ooh. And we're, we're bringing back for the first time. Remember for the first time? Ooh. That was a beast back in I the was day. A, oh, that man. was a while. And listen, I know sometimes y'all be thinking like, yo, it's sponsored. This is going to be whack. This ain't going to be that episode. All right. Mm-hmm. We got a lot of input and all the programming so stay tuned because it's still gonna be the podcast oh yeah we we i know because we've done some sponsors one in the past and they were just like huh, we just had to do it but this <laughs> we had fun with all this of these really so fun. shout out to universal shout out to universal for letting us do our thing oh yeah oh now, yeah I'm, I'm about to uh i'm about to i'm about to get us paid real quick I'm go ahead to, do that thing to, man. you might be wondering what is my oh i'm about to tell you for those that don't know <laughs> i'm about to tell you you want to give me some eerie music do 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 from Blumhouse, the producer of Get Out, Universal is releasing a new movie, Ma, in theaters May 31st, starring Academy Award winner Octavia Spencer, like you've never seen her before. Give me some hits. Ba-bum! Octavia Spencer, or Ma, befriends a group of teenagers. She lets the teens party in her basement, but we soon realize Ma is guarding a dark secret and has a serious case of FOMO. Hit. Ba-bum! Ma's hospitality quickly turns into obsession, and her basement goes from the best best party spot in town to everyone's worst nightmare hits <gasps> woo I'll, if that don't Fire. make you want to see it if Fire. that don't make you want to see it I have chills Octavia Spencer have has never been this creepy yeah she did like, I was watching the preview I was like I don't I don't want to go see this <laughs> this ain't the same Octavia this, this is insane it's a real thrill. don't make me drink alone now it's like whoa <laughs> what is about to happen <laughs> now I get home safe like whoa, whoa. Uh, you know where I stay yeah <laughs> where's home <laughs> where is home there's some creepy parts of that trailer bro I saw it and it it, 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 it gave me the shivers the shivers the shivers <laughs> It gave me I the hate shivers. That you said it like that. <laughs> yeah. It's creepy. I mean, it it, it kind of reminded me of high school a little bit. Yeah. Because like, it, you know, in the movie, she invites all these people over into her basement, and they're like drinking and partying like high school, and then it turns like real creepy. Probably like how your high school experiences were. <laughs> yes. My no, nah, I worked Very in high creepy. school. You know, I I had a different childhood, but but high school, I didn't really hang with kids my age. I was on some other stuff. Older, younger. Older. What? 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 So it's what just like ma. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was, yeah, I was, but I was always the youngest person around the people I was hanging out with. Would you okay. go to Ma's house? She invited you. If I was in high school, for yeah. sure, <laughs> for sure. Because yeah. like in the movie, they're like they don't have nowhere to drink. They actually they're not like young, they're not old enough to buy liquor. So right. she's like, "Come on, I'll buy you liquor." And she's like, "Don't don't go um, out there where it's where it's dangerous. Come here, it's safe, it's controlled." Yeah, it so was I, always first, one person it was like, that had that house right. though. Huh? It was always one person that had that house though. You, you you knew somebody like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it was a, it was a it was Humph. A, another uh, another kid, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was always. A, I didn't get invited a lot. They thought I was a narc because I was like class president. <laughs> you still kind of get that. I still get that. <laughs> but I be I be really. I was the one out there doing the most dirt. I had a kid at fourteen, so if they thought about it, like nah, this is the guy you want to have around. Oh, you I was showed up, like, up. Hey, what's up? Where's all the parties going on? You're like, what? who is this cop? <laughs> 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 what about you in high school? Were you like? 
Were you like invited? <laughs> no, I I kept the mustache in high school. So you had so the cop the mustache. mustache. Yeah. And this, this right here. <laughs> this for sure a wire. We should, we should, blur, we should blur that right there. I hope we can. Bl- can we blur this? As long as this? <laughs> this is a lot, bro. We you can hide a wire perfectly in that chest hair. <laughs> it's six of them. He's working well, the at three is, different agencies. It's so hairy that the the audio is not going to be picked up. Correctly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Super what kind of drugs you guys need? <laughs> Speak it to my chest. <laughs> Wait, but I mean, did you guys like party a lot in high school or what? I did. I was burning both ends of the camp because I was I was very studious, but I was also working a lot. I had a full time job in high school at White Castles, and then I was still partying too. So I was like, get off work, take a you whole. You were bath. really respond. You grew yeah. up fast. I grew up. <laughs> you fast. were Ma in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had my first job at like nine at the junkyard. That's why I first started working at. I picked nine. up nine. I was playing like Yu Gi Oh at nine. 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 <laughs> junkyard. I thought you had to be like fifty five to apply nah, there. <laughs> man. My granddaddy, my grand, all my uncles worked at the junkyard, so they would bring the grandkids and nephews and stuff. So I picked up cans, stripped cars from aluminum, broke down all. And they just got the copper all the wire out. He's driving, but that's how I learned. That, yeah, that's how I learned how to hot wire a car at the junkyard. That's how I learned how to drive at the junkyard. It was it was, it was fun as a sense. kid. Mm-hmm. It was fun a, as a kid. That's like a perfect origin story for you. Yeah, and then at like twenty, <laughs> at nine years old, I'm making like twenty dollars a day. So it's like, yo, that, yeah, of course I do this. You made twenty dollars a day at nine years old. At nine years old, you and f- I know I was I was getting cheated. I should have got like forty, but my granddad was like, well, I, t- I brought you out of here. So I'm, gonna take- <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to picture like a. And that's nine- I learned how to pimp. A nine-year-old to here at the end of the day, just like counting stacks, just like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yo, they used to <laughs> give it to okay. me at once to make it feel like it was more, too. As a kid, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Look at here. 21? Like Were yeah. you flexing, too? What? Oh, man, I would go to the grocery store and buy all the candy bars. I ain't going to the corner store. I'm going the, to the grocery store. You did the store. money phone, but it was yeah. still a cord. <laughs> <laughs> it had a cord on it. It was like an old paper. <laughs> man, my uh, when I was in high school, parties were... Kind of wild because yeah. I, I I lived in Los Angeles. I went to Hamilton, so like I ain't gonna like call out or the people who threw this party, but I didn't know that parties ended at two a.m. till college because up until then they always ended with police or gunshots. Yeah, well, I went, that's when you knew the party was over. When was, I I was raised in East St. Louis, and we had this club called the Monastery. The Monastery didn't close to five. The club was called the Monastery. Monastery. We called it the Mono for short. And it was a dance for the mono and everything. And the club, like this, how this how crazy the club was. The fights would happen around two or three, but the club wouldn't shut down. Like at, at <laughs> three like o'clock, the window, like. at three o'clock, they used to play. Uh, uh, what was the boy name? The rapper uh, Drama. He had a song. Left, 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 right, left. Get on. It was a it was a hood song, and so the security would get in the Never middle of the this. crowd. And they would be pushing people because it's a part of the song where they'd be like, move, move. And they so they throwing people all around, fights are breaking like off. A like the security started yeah. most of the fight. Area. Oh, it was very scary. The security? I mean, I'm, not, I'm not gonna hold you. It was very scary, but it was also exciting too. And it was the best place to get a chick because, like, when this happens, the chick be like, oh, they move back and they run right into your arms. So this. This is the easy part. It was like, yeah. You tra- oh, it was like trapping. It's like, <laughs> well, it was no, like you was putting a piece of candy and then pulling the string. Like, yeah, in the box like, falls. You were saying the security <laughs> was starting most of the fights. So they were. In. Yeah. So it's like, hey, who, stop fighting. Who, who, who are you supposed to call after that? <laughs> Ghostbusters. I, <laughs> I, I, re- I distinctly remember a time after an LA party, there was like, like a fight and everybody was running or there was like shooting or something like that. And we ran up to a security guard and we we're like, they're shooting. And they're like, that sounds like a personal problem. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, that's why you don't have to worry about. <laughs> I will never forget a security guard told me that. And I was just like, what do I do? <laughs> the scariest part about the monastery was that, like, it was one of the easiest clubs to get a gun in. Like, there was. It was called the monastery. Yeah, first of there was all. security was and, and uh, metal detectors, but people still like got guns in. It was so crazy. I felt like. <laughs> it almost was like when somebody is getting checked and instead of like keeping the gun on them, they just take it out and they just hold their hands up like that. <laughs> but the security guard is so focused on like winding them down and patting them down. He didn't even look at his hands and he just walk in with the gun like that. You know, That's how ridiculous it was. This is ridiculous. You know, there is a very clear cut 
difference between black and white parties. <laughs> we started off like <laughs> these mob parties, like the biggest problem was Octavia Spencer. <laughs> well, she was just like too. drinking mm-hmm. in a basement. You don't know she a killer though. You know what I'm saying? That was very different than our high school parties. <laughs> Sheesh. The, the biggest problem at white parties is people cheating at beer pong. It's like, you're too close. You can't bend the elbow. They get you destroyed. Can't bend, you, can't you can't bend the elbow. That's that's the biggest thing I, I experienced at white parties. I got in a fight because wow. of that. What, you bending the elbow? Fight? Yeah, because I was like just messing around shooting uh, and they're like hey it's not your turn <laughs> I was like, he just got fired on <laughs> yeah. I know he got beat up too because if he said bop 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 like he definitely got there was no yeah. block sound effects <laughs> <laughs> there was no like bop 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 it was bop bop no, ah! <laughs> those were all connecting sounds yeah. <laughs> you got manhandled wow. as a man you just got flung around <laughs> that's unfortunate alright so speaking of school and turning up did you guys hear about this uh, Morehouse College graduation? Yes. I have it. Why can't I have been there? First of all, do you know what Morehouse is? Okay. <laughs> it's, it's the blackest of colleges. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Cool. It's, very, it's, it's a historical black college. And Robert F. Smith, mm-hmm. which is worth the billions of dollars. Billions. Billions Make of sure dollars. that S is on there. The bills. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was, you know, he, he's an uh, alumni. Right. And uh he, he spoke at the graduation and announced very casually that he was going Gonna to... Eliminate student debt for the graduating class all of 2019. Of um, excuse me? Yes. <laughs> all hundred. He's like, I got you all covered. And it was almost like quiet for... students. A, it was almost quiet for a, a couple seconds. They were just like, wait, wait, wait. What? Wait, what? I would have melted. They would have oh had to scoop God. me out of my seat with a solo cup. <laughs> it's a bounty paper towel. So just like, Fam. <laughs> That's a great way to do it. Like, he did it suddenly. Like, hey, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was just like, it. well, it was kind of a flex because he, he was like, we have the alumni sitting over there and I'm going to challenge them. Me and my wife are covering the student loans for, for, all, for all the people. Yeah, he was like, we are, my, and me like, and my family are huh? creating a grant to help eliminate student debt for the graduating class of 2019. What kind of challenge? I'm sure they were sitting over there like, dang. What well, we, if I was, we uh, just go. imagine someone from the graduating class of 2018 is like, no. Yeah, like, Whoa, we were talking about that. If you were graduating the next year or you dropped out because student loans were getting too much, yeah. imagine that. You were just sitting there, like watching, like what? <laughs> Kev, like, Kevin made a point. Like, imagine if you were one class short of graduating in twenty nineteen. Oh, oh wow. like man. you, or you Take flunk one class oh, and you couldn't walk. Man. Oh my god! Oh, man. Kevin Jr. right there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Damn! Just wow! Tears. Wow! Because it's like, Yo, you know how you, sick you would be. You know how much pressure that is on the speaker of the next graduation. Oh my god! They just like. Uh, <laughs> But that Every challenge, man. <laughs> that <laughs> challenge. <laughs> he was like, I'm going to challenge to eliminate hunger. I bought burgers for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking you got to throw some stuff. <laughs> T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. They're like, man, where's my loans at, man? You know what? I immediately thought of The Office. You know that episode? <laughs> you know that episode where he promised all of the, like, like to pay off all those graduations or like for all those uh, high school tuitions? Yeah. And then it came time to pay and he was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I know everybody wants laptops. And I was like, all right. And he was like, well, I got laptop batteries. <laughs> it was just like, dang, Yo, wow. That's such a funny show, man. I cannot believe that. And then, and I had to, I had to like look up Robert F. Smith. Like, yeah. He yeah. don't got, he ain't a rapper. No. <laughs> he don't own a liquor. No. <laughs> He's, He's just, just out here making black. money. Business owner, like a just a rich dude. They haven't they haven't given the full number, but they estimated to be somewhere between ten and forty million. Oh, hear me uh, out, hear me out. Ten and forty million. I'm playing the lottery costs? for ten million, and he's giving away between ten and forty million. And it ain't gonna touch him. It ain't it gonna ain't touch him. Gonna hurt him at all. I mean, hit me out though. Even as a billionaire, that's still a lot of money to it shell is. out to some strangers. Absolutely, mind you. Absolutely, but I think you know he said <laughs> he's, he he his, his age kind of showed he was like i'm gonna put a little gas in your bus so he said something like that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because i feel like that was just like that was just huge for the culture it, it was is. just like i ain't even in school and i was just like hmm. and i don't want to like you know like turn his back on like yo rappers are uh, paying for funerals mm-hmm. and stuff like that you could be doing stuff like that because anything you do that That's you true. don't have to do is helpful but That's like true. this is this is the thing that we need more things like this because black people come out of college with so much not just black people people come out of college with so much debt mm-hmm. and a lot of people when they make it 
what they do is they give money to the university. You know, UCLA right? and yeah. USC have the largest endowments in in, in like in That's history. That's crazy true. They have they they have, I'm talking about their endowments is worth billions. Wow. Meanwhile, the students are coming out of out of the universities Same with $150,000 worth of debt. Same debt. debt. That's and crazy. It's they call you. Debt. Yeah, they call you to like, hey, come on, <laughs> you up? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dude, stop <laughs> donating to these schools, man. Donate to these students because they're That's the ones that are going to need that stuff. You get a, you come out of school with one hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of student debt. Your first five to ten years of your job, you're just spending paying that off. Mm-hmm. You can't even get a good house, a good housing situation because you're paying off student debt, bro. Dude, USC called me asking for money, and I was like, I didn't even go to your school. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, but you got $20? Yeah, like, no. <laughs> I'm not calling you for $15. Every little bit helps. Every, I, ain't, I ain't paying back my student debt. Yeah, yeah, I ain't using my degree. I feel like if I ain't, until I start using my degree, I'm not paying. Can you nothing. return it? Can I you tried to. It ain't Macy's though. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Like, you know, I ain't even used this. <laughs> Y'all can take it back. No one's asked me. You know, that. a Home Depot, you can return anything. Yeah. That's not even yours. Like, you Are you re- serious? You can return that crate. And even though you didn't buy it from Home Depot, they'll it's give just you like, money back. Safar, you can you can you can buy a bottle of cologne from Safar. You can return it back with like just this bottom part in there and they'll take it back and give you a full refund. Are you serious? Yes. You just like I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Yeah, I tried it. <laughs> it gave I tried me an allergic it. reaction. I sprayed it on some couches and then my car to see if I could really no, <laughs> but a I, long I just time couldn't do it. Give <laughs> it was two but years it, later. Yeah, I'm not, they're like are you, I smell it on you now. Like, did you spray this on I was just like left? the last chance. I was trying to make sure I didn't like it. Dang. Did you spray it on you to return it to us? <laughs> Wait, did you did you just spray me? I sometimes my, it smells different on other people. Taste. That was my, my, my last test. <laughs> I bought that, that Christian Dior Sauvage, and I waited like two years to buy it, and then I bought it. I was like, all right, I like it, and I have not worn it since I bought it. I bought it a year ago. And I just tried to make myself like it, but I just don't, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so I I read something very funny on the internet. This has nothing to do with nothing. You know how to read, Pat? <laughs> I've been reading this whole time. <laughs> Literally in my life. All right, so it's kind of hilarious. All right, you ready for this? It's a fun fact. Watch it not be that funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so hear me out. If there are watermelons, why aren't there fire melons, air melons, and earth melons? The elements. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. It was damn funny. That was damn funny. I said it exactly how I read it the first time, and yeah. I'm very proud. That was great. That setup was great. I was. I thought it was gonna be a hit blunts moment, but that was fantastic. The element. That was such a missed opportunity, though. Like, can you imagine being at the grocery store, deciding between an air melon and an earth melon? <laughs> it's just a whole segment. Just the element. air melon is like super light. <laughs> <laughs> You're like tapping it. Like, it keeps like floating. Over. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. god. <laughs> this is hot. <laughs> Caliente. <laughs> All right. I'm glad I did that. Yeah. Oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm glad you know how to read, Pat. <laughs> that was uh that was that was wholesome. All right, so <laughs> All right, so a weird um NBC uh um, excuse me, CBS News reported a really really weird survey. So basically they said that more than half of adults in the US Confess to using a swimming pool instead of showering. Instead of showering? Right? What was the what was the ratio? Was there a ratio? Okay, so right, it's it's one of those things, it's like, did I read that right? (laughs) So it basically said that uh, most Americans confess to immediately jumping into a swimming pool instead of showering after exercising or doing housework. Um, they basically (laughs) They took a survey. I don't know if the uh, stats are on this, but it said when dirt, sweat, personal care products, or other things on our bodies react with chlorine, there is less chlorine available to kill germs. So rinsing off for just one minute removes most of the dirt, sweat, or anything else on your body. That was <laughs> the reason. First of all, who has this much access to swimming pools? I, 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 I just, like- <laughs> just got to go out and throw it out there. That's, that's a very... White stat. That's okay, yeah. Cool. That should have said that. most white Americans mm-hmm. over half of white America because we. Well, like, that's what they meant by half. Because I don't. Nobody asked me this. Did anybody ask you? Nobody. No, I never no, got. No, no, I yeah. never get these emails or texts for these right? surveys. Like I don't know who are they questioning, but it's never me. And they're also aware. They say, it says they're also aware that pool chemicals do not eliminate the need. 
but they still do that. It says Dr. Clint Wyant. Uh, Sounds like somebody who knows, does yeah. science. Mm-hmm. Chair of the Water Quality and Health Council. Where, what? Somebody's <laughs> what a, walking around <laughs> as the chair of the Water Council. That sounds where do mystic. They, <laughs> where do they hold their <laughs> meetings at? Also look at airbenders. He, has a, he has a cape for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Clint Wyant. Chair of the Water Quality and Health Council. That sounds. He must. I would, he must have a cool office. Though, I would Loki. hate to like go out to to dinner or lunch with him and just order something. He's like, you just gonna get regular water? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like looking at your tap water. Yeah. Like, mm-mm-mm. He just breaks out his own like <laughs> filtered water it's bottle. Just, it's, it's just like, an orb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he pulls it out of his pack. Like, <laughs> <laughs> He's a uh, what Adam Sandler, a water boy. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the water from. Man, high quality H2O. <laughs> H2O, right there. <laughs> high quality H2O, right there. Wow, that is dirty. I mean, I remember doing that as a child. Yeah, as a kid. Or like, this is for people who own swimming pools. If you owned a swimming pool, I'd probably do that. It's like, yeah, fuck it. I, I feel like that's just a pool full of pink eye at that point. Oh, yeah. Shit. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty It's gross. expensive to get that pools clean, man. Yeah, Why not true. Just- you know, take whatever. a shower. <laughs> yeah, just save it a little bit. Wait, hold up. Do y'all, do y'all wash your legs? Yes. Yeah, we, we talked, we talked about, about that last okay, week. Cool, do you cool, wash cool. your legs? Yeah, of I course. I like you don't. Okay. I do wash my legs. You really? seem like a dirty yeah. legged person. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was not racist. It was not racist. It had nothing to do with racist. I'm just judging by your jacket shirt combo. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, though. Unless you got a, a spouse or a significant other, you ain't washing your back enough. I'm for sure mm-hmm. not. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. probably, I wouldn't be surprised if there was just a tiny, like, line. Perfectly down my back of just filth, <laughs> because I for sure can't. You reach. can't reach it, man. Well, you gotta. That's, you, that's what the loofahs are good for. I got, I got. You got the, the loofah loofah on the stick? stick. Yeah, yeah. man. You gotta get that in there, bro. He's in there like Fred. I've Flintstone. seen a thing where it's like a, it's a loofah wrap, and you go. Ah, that's good too. That's good too. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm super serious about cleanliness, man. I, I take all the You take care of your skin. Yeah, I, I use a, a coffee based scrub. Um, I forget her name. She sent That's it to me. That's why the freckles. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> coffee, coffee is coffee great for the skin. <laughs> the caffeine, the caffeine revitalizes your skin, and then the the coffee grounds actually remove the dead skin. So, coffee is a natural body scrub. Wait, so does it kind of wake you up? No, no, it's not for like that. No, no, it's just you could use already use coffee too. You is it because it's ground coffee, right? It's ground coffee, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah So yeah. it's so coarse, if you mm-hmm. just rub it against your face, it'll remove all the dead skin, but the caffeine also is released into your skin to like revitalize. Because I heard so. people who use like walnut scrub and like those peach apricot scrubs, I yeah. heard those like, those are like little knives on your face, like you should be oh, using it's horrible? those. Yeah. Oh, like those little beads? Yeah, it's just like, it's like so abrasive, it's like not meant for your skin. Yeah, I don't use that. Yeah. I just use the coffee one, that's pretty good for me. Whoa, really? Mm-hmm. Isn't also, that what ex- I thought that's what exfoliating was, just like a rough... Yeah, it is. Like I mean, it's, it's different. For some yeah. people like have sensitive skin, so they have to find a specific scrub that they can use. For also, fun fact, you know, I like to drop these in there. Vodka is an excellent cleaning agent. You can clean your bathroom, bathtub, sinks, floors, Walls, everything with vodka. Who found that out? Yeah. <laughs> what lonely is so <laughs> drunk as fuck? Oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, wow. I got to clean this up. up in my shower. I got the lime, got the lime out. <laughs> he just went, we just went, get went. wasted and clean up at the same time. <laughs> He's just drunk and giving advice. <laughs> vodka, get that out. Like, it was. Get yeah. out of here, vodka. Henry. Vodka, <laughs> vodka would do it, man. Get out of here. Henry. Well, who's the guy who discovered like Coke can clean your toilet? Well, I heard Coke. that Coca-Cola could clean like blood off of the freeway, like cops oh. used it or like paramedics used it. So I feel like Coke is good for everything but drinking. But yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's delicious. Though. It's so crazy because Coca-Cola isn't as big in the Midwest and the South as it is out here. Like it's it, big out here. Yeah, yeah, out here. Like you, you, you go to the trucks, like the food trucks. Most of the food trucks have Coke over Pepsi, whereas in the Midwest and the South, Pepsi is the bigger. The bigger I wonder brand. why. What do you like know. better? I was more of a Pepsi person if I did drink that, but me, it was always Dr. Pepper or Mountain Dew. Those are my Well, favorite. I meant between the two. Yeah, Pepsi. <laughs> I grew up on Pepsi, man. My mom drank Pepsi with her cognac. She used to like Pepsi and Crown Royal. Um, but specifically, well, she wouldn't do Coke in that? Nah, nobody in my family did Coke. Really? <laughs> yeah. I don't, I'm trying to think if I know the... If I can like remember the taste, can difference. you really taste the difference? You can. There is for sure a taste it is. difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? But Pepsi, I, don't, I think I it's sweeter. Remember. I think Pepsi is a little sweeter, and Coke has the more acidic flavor, so you get more of that. Ah, it's like Coke. spicy. 
Oh, I wouldn't say spicy. <laughs> As it's not no fucking jalapeno <laughs> it's 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 right now. It's just well, you know, cold, people man. say Sprite is like spicy, <laughs> spicy they soda. They say acid. <laughs> acid. Sprite is spicy soda. <laughs> That's what they call it. They're like who says I feel like that? Ginger beer is spicy soda. <laughs> who like, says that Sprite people? is? <laughs> I feel like ginger beer for sure is the spicy of of them. Anything that makes it go ah, is yeah, spicy. Like ah, the soda. You put a little spicy. pepper on it. It's like ooh, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> Did you put cayenne in here? No, that's black pepper. <laughs> if you put black pepper in like a vodka martini, it'll take the burn out of it. But you gotta let the you gotta let the black pepper sit in there for about eight to ten How minutes. Do you know all this. He knows so much. I, anything yeah. around drinking, I probably know a lot about. <laughs> but I, I hang around a lot of bars and pubs, and if you go to like a lot of these speakeasies that's down hilarious. in the south, mm-hmm. or like these mom and pop spots, you'll meet a lot of traveling people, and they'll just put you on the game. This guy bought me one. He was like, let it sit for eight to ten minutes, man. And I did that, and like it was like water. Damn. That for some reason so the say pepper. Again. Say it one more time. You put you put black pepper into um like a, a martini or anything with vodka, and it will have an adverse effect on the. The burning part of the vodka. So when you drink it, it literally just be like drinking water. So you literally pepper your vodka yeah. and let it sit for how long? Eight to ten minutes. All right, guys, you know what to do. Grab a glass of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> try it, red man. Yeah. That is that's that's. I like to do I'm it with yeah. with wet and in a little lime wedge or a lemon wedge. It's actually better with the lemon. All right, so the pepper thing only works with vodka. Yeah, I only I've, I've I haven't tried it with gin or anything, and I wouldn't try it with dark. But yeah, it definitely works with the vodka, though, man. I need. To, I'm, I like drinking tips because I'm not good at it. Yeah. I'm not good at drinking at all. Like, <laughs> what time do you, what what age did you start drinking? Uh, I actually didn't get drunk until I was 19, 18. Oh wow! Yeah, I didn't start drinking until I was twenty seven. Oh wow! Really? Yeah. You I did twenty one. I waited till I was twenty one. Yeah. Oh, just for the law or what? I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what we're on a podcast. Who's <laughs> Nork. <laughs> no, I just didn't know how to drink. Yeah, I just don't know what to order. I, when I the first time I drank with you, you were drinking Cosmos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, they be hitting, man. Here's the thing. <laughs> it's hilarious because it's a Cosmo, <laughs> and I admire your bravery. To it? <laughs> yeah. No, that's bravery. It like just, he just literally drinking walks, a Cosmo with his legs crossed. He, <laughs> he walks away from the bar with a Cosmo, smoking and a does Virginia not hand Slim it to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> just, he keeps Ooh. drinking it. It this always looks like he has great. a girl with him, and he doesn't. <laughs> I gotta put on the persona. <laughs> but this it's like you nice. must be judged by every bartender because it's like I'm kind of like I'm kind of like you in the sense that I prefer like <laughs> fruity drinks right because it's Cause good. disgusting yeah i used to get vodka pineapples i used to get white russians and the bartender would look at me like i was a sorority girl <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing like Dude. even with white ro- russians you can you can make it strong so like a white russian uh, you could do it with the baileys and a little vodka but if you do a double shot of vodka so what I when I used to make I used to make white Russians for my friends when they came over, but I would use three different types of vodka. Mm-hmm. I would use like sky vodka, and then this is obviously college, so um, it was cheap. Uh, I used to use a Stoli vanilla vodka and then a Stoli chocolate vodka. So you got all three you got of those. A swirl. Yeah, yeah, you got. And then Napoleon. you put the then you put the Baileys on top of it. Now it's not a it's not like a soft drink. You mm-hmm. got to sip that shit because if you drink that like just down it, you're fucked. Dude, I used to order dirty Shirley's. Where it was like a Shirley Temple, like cherry <laughs> sprite and alcohol. So, so did you transition out of this? Yeah, like, I'm now a horrible. Now he just does wine coolers. <laughs> <laughs> a box of wine, fuzzy no, nables, no. sex on the beach, <laughs> <laughs> penis no, in a glass. It's totally opposite. I'm <laughs> really old fashions. Yo, nice. old fashions. Yeah, is what old fashions. Me out. Yeah. yeah, old fashions is a good little segue because it's like. So old strong. fashions and Manhattans are the perfect drinks for your introduction to like whiskey mm-hmm. and bourbon. Mm-hmm. Like those are great for that. And then like once it's you tough. like for me, it was about finding the drink that wasn't disgusting. Like if yeah. you say alcohol is disgusting, it's because you haven't found the one that you like. Like mm-hmm. I, I'm a whiskey guy, and my favorite whiskey is Telemardu. I'm working on a brand sponsorship right now because it is so good. If you like Jameson, try Telemardu. It is, 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 is none of the burn that you're going to get from the Jameson. It it's way smoother. No, it's not. It's actually probably cheaper than a uh, than Jameson. You can get it for about $19.99, between $19.99 and $24 a bottle. Dude, whiskey really Telemardu. does... 
put some hair on your chest. The yeah. first time, yeah. This is just he added in this bottle. <laughs> this is pouring into a whiskey barrel. <laughs> this is just after one drink. <laughs> they just licking the sides of them. They put the lid on when they didn't start to cry. <laughs> Got to put some chest on your hair. <laughs> <laughs> that made no sense. He was just born like Sonic, just a little ball of, a ball of fur. <laughs> his body had to grow into his hair. <laughs> just a hairball that came out. There was a baby in here somewhere. Uh, ma'am, I think you gave <laughs> birth to a cat because the hairball came out first. <laughs> That's hilarious. But actually, old fashions transitioned to me because like all the producers here, all the bearded, you know, they're big all the editors and stuff they were all drinking old fashioned I couldn't be drinking you know pineapple vodkas around them so I started drinking old fashions and I'm I'm I'm, 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 I'm in there it's yeah. good whiskey now yeah. try it try it you gotta find your favorite whiskey and then have it with that and like a lot of bars don't carry tell them I do so I always have my flask with me cause I don't wanna if I'm gonna pay for some bullshit I might as well just bring my own shit you know what I'm saying? So I always They're like, laugh. excuse me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I have no shame either. I will go to the bar and just get that glass and I will pour it at the bar and I'll just walk away like that. And I don't do ice either. I'm doing everything neat because if I'm going to pay $14 for a drink, I don't want nothing to so water it down. order a glass? Yep. And they're like, how does this guy keep getting drunk? <laughs> yeah. They know. Glass. I know. But I mean, if you you come up to him and ask me to leave, I'm like, well, you don't have my drink at your establishment. I bought food or whatever I'm at. Mm-hmm. If I'm just at a bar, then I just, I'll do it a little more low key. But yeah, I don't, I ain't no shame in my game, man. Do you do it low key or do you just straight up? It looks it? to them it's straight in the eyes. <laughs> well, I'm not that outrageous with like, it, but I will like get the glass and I'll start pouring it as I walk away. <laughs> Mm. Oh, got it. Yeah. Okay. That, I mean, that's, it's honestly a power move. Waste to cheat it is. <laughs> it is a power move. Because I got the money. You know, yeah. I got the money. I'll buy somebody else a drink, but I'm not gonna buy from your inventory. And you don't carry what I want. Like that doesn't help me at all. I just hate bars because it's like the fact that they'll charge you like fifteen dollars for one glass as opposed to you getting a bottle yourself. Bro, I went to a friend's birthday party last night at the Powder Room on Kawanga, right in between Kitchen Twenty Four and Saint Felix. I bought. Two gin and tonics, and I made both of them doubles. Sixty-two dollars. Sixty-two. And it probably took forever to like yeah. get the fucking drink. And right? the dude, like, at, once I saw he was making other people's drinks, like he made somebody like a, a like a fruity drink in a martini glass, and I saw him like getting something out of there with his finger. But he, wasn't, he wasn't wiping. He wiped it on a towel, but he's still taking cash and card like that. So I was right. like, bro, just just pour my stuff in and. I'll, I'll get my own lemon in line because I don't want like yo like bars yeah. first of all bars are nasty the wet the wet rags yeah, yeah. if oh, you the, go to a bar uh, look at the fruit because typically they keep the fruit between two and three days so like whatever they don't use at the end of the night they put it in a refrigerator and they bring that out so, I'm never going out if I don't, if I, don't I, I typically don't get fruit in my drinks the only reason I started doing this is because I'm doing this gin and tonic because it's less calories but I go look at the fruit first if the fruit looks weathered or like it was like you could tell when fruit is oh I don't do the fruit at all when was the last time you were like messy drunk where you were just like ah. hmm. it's been messy a couple of years man I don't I don't like being drunk I, I I'm always that. I like having my wherewithal of where I'm at and being cognizant right. of where mm-hmm. I'm at so I don't get drunk unless I'm at home I'll have like it, but it also takes me a lot if I'm out it'll take me six drinks oh, stop. to get Damn, like really? to a point yeah. where I'm like oh I shouldn't drive I'm kind of done after three I'm oh, kind of done like, after at home, my first with- <laughs> at home like when we when I have friends over like we got a, this this couple I hang with from uh, Texas whenever we open a bottle it, we throw the top away we're never closing that bottle so whatever we open is gonna get drunk oh, within that stop. night Damn. Yeah, but they drink. That's commitment. They drink like wine. Like when we when we <laughs> being bougie, we all just have our own wine bottle and we put a straw in it. Like we are a drinking. straw. <laughs> yeah, you drink with straws. What well, like out of the wine like. bottle? Yeah, because everybody has their own bottle. You drink out of a wine bottle with a straw. With a straw. So it's like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is is this commitment alcoholic <laughs> stay at home mom type of shit yeah right <laughs> hey man we're having fun out here you know those Facebook moms we're just like wine 30 huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's, all those, that's all, all those excuses here. for alcoholism yeah. it's 5 o'clock somewhere <laughs> I don't have a problem I'm just a lush <laughs> <laughs> yo the term it's 5 o'clock somewhere is bad is the worst excuse to drink at 7 a.m. <laughs> dude I saw a video of like a yoga mom like it was like wine yoga i was like just drink (laughs) let me tell you something the more you advance though the the more you encounter that like once i got into sky club with delta and started going to the the, the sky club like they got drinks at seven in the morning it's like 
well, I'm not going to not take this free drink. <laughs> 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 like, how am I not? Like, you pay for so much stuff. When something's offered for free, it don't matter what time it is. I'm like going to take this. Alcoholism changes in the airport. Mm-hmm. In the airport and Sunday mornings. I feel mm-hmm. like it's just totally excused. It's so, yeah, it's totally yeah, excused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally excused in the airport and Sunday morning. If you were switch. dropping your kid off and you drank before you dropped your kid off, you got a problem. problem. Yeah. But if you're catching a 7 o'clock flight, hey, yeah, have this I'll jacket. Which is so funny because realistically, you shouldn't be really drinking that much at the airport. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I ain't flying yeah. that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the problem? Uh, I ain't in Washington. What the fuck do I care? <laughs> well, you never know. What if, yeah. God forbid, what if like... Uh, Emergency landing, you got to land on the water and you're just drunk as fuck. <laughs> that ain't gonna make no difference. I can't swim either way. So, as long as I got my life vest on, I'm gonna be drunk. It's a 50 50 chance either way it goes for me. <laughs> I'd rather go out not remembering what happened than like be totally aware of drowning. You're like, fuck. <laughs> For least if I'm drunk, I'm like, oh, this shower is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might be a little fun on the way yeah, down. Whoa. You're the only one in the plane crash. Like, whoa. <laughs> the slide. From the fire to the water. <laughs> the slide. Down the slide. <laughs> the slide low key looks fun. <laughs> You're like, yeah. some people, me next. <laughs> we go again. <laughs> no. You swim you're trying to, you're trying I have this crawl question, down y'all, because the they always tell you if, in the case of an emergency, don't try to grab your valuables, just head to the exit. I'm <laughs> Fucking grabbing my carry on, bro. Shit. I don't yeah, care what else. Wet. I'm not gonna leave, leave, like just leave my iPad. Am I up? No, I mean, fam. what are you gonna swim with it? Nah, yeah, but at least if I got it, I could, I could take it to <laughs> Apple and get it repaired. I got insurance. <laughs> He's on the floor. He's, on the raft. <laughs> He's like, shit, what if we get home, man? But my raft gonna get saved because I got GPS. <laughs> I'm sitting on beacons while it's they over broken. here with nothing. No, 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 no. It's waterproof. I got an otter box. Cast away. I got an otter box. <laughs> I relate. <laughs> I know what to do. We need to find a Wilson. I relate. <laughs> you guys see the I'm last fucking thing. grabbing my belongings. <laughs> and if I got enough time, because everybody can't walk through the door at the same time. If I got enough time, I'm gonna hit up the liquor yeah. part. I'm gonna hit that bed up, just store it in my bag. Y'all gonna be thirsty. Everybody's sp- cramming for the emergency exit here underneath the cart. He's Yo, like, this is a good one. if it He's takes like, us a day or two to get rescued, y'all gonna get hungry and thirsty as fuck on that raft. Meanwhile, I'm wasted. He's wasted. He's watching Lost. <laughs> I'm dehydrated on the. <laughs> I'm on a raft dancing the shit, shirt off, getting somewhere. Woo! He's listening to some Caribbean music. Ever. <laughs> Everybody's like. <laughs> Thinking about death, he's just like under the sea, <laughs> under the sea. <laughs> I wish I could be. Yo, I'm having a good time, man. Woo. Oh interview with me, so sir, tell us what it was like. It was fucking amazing. <laughs> five out of I can't five. wait to my next crash. <laughs> <laughs> my wakes crash. I didn't know Delta did cruises. <laughs> oh my god, man! Good time. Ties, am I right? Maybe I shouldn't be talking about all these airplanes. I gotta catch a flight <laughs> in like two days. So. No, stop. Yeah, no, yeah. You're gonna get flagged for sure. And <laughs> hey, we watch the podcast in here. We, we're gonna have to ask you a couple questions. <laughs> oh, shit, man. All right, I have another interesting question for y'all. Let's go. What happens if Pinocchio says, My nose is gonna grow now? Huh. <laughs> Does the universe break? (laughs) (laughs) You see God like, (laughs) (laughs) think about it. If he if he says my nose is gonna grow now and it doesn't, he lies, which make would make it grow. Would make it grow. But if it does grow, he told the truth. Um. yeah. You, you see people Thanos jumping. Thanos is just like. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Thanos is like. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if Thanos did that, that should have been lit. <laughs> what? Oh, if he man. did a. What? <laughs> you should have gone for the head. <laughs> I don't feel that too good. That would have been the best part of the movie, dog. <laughs> Yo, Atlanta would have went wild. Oh, man. <laughs> All of Atlanta disappeared. <laughs> Yo. Just think about <laughs> in the context of the Avengers, <laughs> if there was no hint at Thanos being like that up until that point, it's the pinnacle of the movie. <laughs> I'd be like, what? I'd be like, none of the deaths would 
be as hard. Because <laughs> <laughs> people be, be so like, yo, tired. just see it. Yo, <laughs> just, yeah, that, that would shit. literally be the topic of every conversation about the movie. Be like, yo, what, how did they go beat him? Like, yo, did you see what that nigga did? To- <laughs> <laughs> yo, Everything. He, he for real hit no. him. No one would care about Spider Man dying. <laughs> 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 no one would care about anything. We'd have to rename Atlanta as the capital <laughs> of the United States if that happened. It would it would be no oh denying it. No, everywhere else but Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> what stone would he have to get to do that? <laughs> what would be the last infinity stone? It's just, it's just the grill. The trap, the trap stone. The trap stone. <laughs> oh my god! That oh was, shit! Woo! That is hilarious. That is I'm so dumb. glad that didn't happen. <laughs> All right, that uh, that brings us to our conspiracy corner. <laughs> What if? The moonlet. <laughs> what if? What if? <laughs> Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Alright, so this conspiracy theory messed me up. And it's a perfect one to have Waleed on. Because uh, I know how much that this this uh, this guy meant to you mm-hmm, mm-hmm. might blow your guy's mind. Tony Stark. So, do you guys? What? <laughs> this is it's it's kind of silly, but if you think about it, it's like, whoa. Do y'all remember Harambe? Yes. R. I. Yeah. P. Yes. R.I.P. Do you remember how big of a deal that was? Yeah, it was. He was so on a, good. He was on a presidential ballot. It was hilarious, <laughs> oh, right? Yeah. We all participated in this. We all did in the beginning. We all participated in Harambe, R.I.P. Harambe. Remember, there was memes of him in the sky, mm-hmm. right. R.I.P.s, all that stuff. When other people died, he'd be joined with Harambe. It was crazy. <laughs> Fam. So, get this. There's a conspiracy that the whole Harambe thing was literally by white supremacists. And if you, and if you notice, Harambe happened in the middle of the Black Lives Matter movement, the conspiracy is that Harambe was created to mock the Black Lives Matter movement. So you have all of these black people dying on the news, and then all of a sudden a black gorilla dies, and now all these white, remember it was mainly white people championing this. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden they're like, RIP, blah, 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 to this fallen monkey. Uh, and, And it was basically directly like related to like us saying RIP to like all these people. So it was basically like, oh yeah, RIP, Harambe, you know, rest in peace. This, and it was a, a monkey. I don't see the correlation. I don't see I, correlation I, to I don't know I how do I believe would. white people loved Harambe. That's what yeah. I'm saying. They, lo- they did love Harambe. So in the middle of this movement where we were saying, you know, black lives matter and, you know, all these police are killing, you know, these, 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 People and we're, we're, we're championing them one by one and going mm-hmm. like RIP, putting them in the, the sky and stuff like that. They're basically saying that the whole Harambe thing was basically like, oh, this monkey died. Like, rest in peace, Harambe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it was their version of just like mocking the Black Lives Matter movement by over powering by, by overpowering and trying to make that mixing that in on the facebook feed because it was mm-hmm. huge on facebook obviously yeah. huge on social media so they were pretty much mixing that in with things like blue lives matter you know just these random things yeah. that started mm-hmm. popping up to basically lessen the impact of black lives matter and now you have in the in the in the, in the same feed that you know eric garner and all these, all these people who were killed by, by cops and we're, we're trying to, on, on our side, we're like seriously trying to like keep them alive, post them and stuff like that. In mm. the middle of all of that, you have these people like, R.I.P. Harambe, do it for Harambe, have, make, you know, making shirts yeah. of a black monkey that yeah. died. And it was killed. You know what I mean? So it was, it was literally, people are saying that it was a mockery that was started and fueled by a agenda. I believe it, 
my only concern is like I need to know more facts about the timeline. Because <laughs> sometimes people reach, right? Yeah, absolutely. People, Most yeah. conspiracy. I feel though. like yeah, this yeah. one's a reach. I feel like this one is a reach. I feel. Like, I can kind of see it. I feel like it's, I, you know, I'm the, I get, I'm I the can first super pro black person to jump on the bandwagon. Like, yeah, I'll be all for it. Uh-huh. But this one, I feel like this. This one is a reach. This is somebody just trying to spark something, get a little fuel. Well, on you it. remember, mm-hmm. you know, now we have Gucci and stuff coming out, like the whole. Uh, Jim Crow, you know, big lips, that yeah. whole that whole mm-hmm. thing. Is Dude, they made a back. turban. <laughs> How, that is, yeah. Gucci just dropped an eight hundred dollar chic turban and has like, uh, uh, like a white guy like modeling it. First of all, eight hundred dollars. That's crazy. But then, it's super crazy. It's like at this point, Gucci's uh marketing strategy is cultural appropriation <laughs> or pissing off minorities, which mm-hmm. is crazy because it's like. Did they have a meeting and they're like, ah, oh, they'll forget. You know what I mean? They'll I pump think, it up and then they'll forget. Uh, yeah, I think I think that this is just brand recognition, more brand recognition. They do all this type of stuff and then people talk about it for three months. So if you do four big events every year, you got your whole m- year covered. Right. But mm-hmm. if, if, they're neg- if it's negative press, yeah. is that still helping somehow? Yeah. All well, press is good press. I remember the model a year ago. It was like some white dude wearing the turban or whatever. Like, I remember mm-hmm. it was a year ago and like everyone came out. Everyone was like, oh, this was a year ago? This is a year ago. They Why is it resurfacing it. now? Because they dropped it. <laughs> oh, After wow. After all that backlash, they're like, ah, this. <laughs> so it's bad. I mean, Nick Cannon was wearing a turban too. Yeah, but here's Nobody the, okay, really here's the thing. When is it okay? I, I'm not from the SIG community, so right. I can't speak on this, but right. from what my friends tell me, they're like, well, at least Nick Cannon appreciates the culture. Yeah. He takes it in. So they're so, not, nobody's upset so with not, Nick Cannon? Some people are mad, some people aren't. It's very mixed. Okay. Personally, he's rocking the turban. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good look. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't know enough about it to know what, can, what, is, offen- what is offensive and what isn't. Right. Um, but from the tweets that I saw around the Gucci turban, it seems like it's very disrespectful. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I do feel like, you know, the, the reason I brought all that up is like, we are kind of in an age where we're well, not even an age we're, it's sort of always, but it is like a weird mockery like mm. going on right what now. Do you, you know, like everybody's <laughs> like mocking. When I was in London last year, uh, I was doing this hop on hop off tour and this dude was like, big man, big man. They, whenever you're from America, they could tell by your size. He's like, big yeah. man, big man. Uh, you're that president, might have been huh? specific to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were gonna go like, oh, oh, big man, big man. No, they were calling you a big man. <laughs> you were really walking around like, oh, he must know I'm American. He must call all big Americans big man. No, well, they can, t- they they can tell. American. Let me tell you something. Uh, hey, fat ass, fat ass. Oh. <laughs> How do you think American? Yeah. He's like, they know when you I American. I would say this though. I would say this though. London <laughs> was way cooler than Paris. Paris might have the Louvre and Eiffel Tower, but. Parisians hate anybody that's not mm-hmm. a natural a born you're, if Parisian. If you're from Paris, you're a Parisian? Yeah. They hate no. anybody They're that's not that a up. natural born uh, Parisian. Like, they don't, it doesn't matter if you're, like, from London. It doesn't matter okay. if you're, like, it's a black man. Yo, they don't like... This lady walked past us calling her, excuse me, ma'am, miss, lady, bitch, ho, hey, shit, <laughs> nothing. Like, we were not... She refused to wait our table if you acknowledge us as people and we were paying a shit ton of money where we staying and eating sure, and was we had to get the, the whole black thing no no if it's French people dude if you don't like I went to Montreal right now they like get mad at you for not knowing French I was yeah. like, the fuck they won't speak to you if you, unless you speak to them in French and they certain. treat other white people like that too? yes yeah yes wow they're the ultimate race <laughs> oh yeah they're purists <laughs> they're, the, they're, the, they're the purists they of call not, no, listen, listen not yeah. all French people no 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 the no, ones no. that I've encountered though just the ones from Paris yeah, yeah Paris <laughs> like I we even experienced it while we were in the Louvre like this this dude who rang my order up wouldn't let me use his pen like the like the black was how do you, come how off. do you deny you I he put the receipt down and I was like how I'm gonna sign it he's like uh like use your finger I was like, I'm not using them. Give me your pen. You're like, yeah, I got a finger for you. Yeah. He had a pen right there? He had a pen right there and wouldn't let me use it. I had to go like, get the manager like, to go no. get the pee. And then he he's, comped everything. But it was still like, yo, I wanted to make a scene, but then I would have been giving them exactly what they are wanted. Are you sure yeah. that wasn't from being black? No, it wasn't. Dude, if I'm you, telling you. It sounds people, like some yeah. black stuff. The pen might have been a black thing, but it was also the American thing, too. They just don't like American stuff. They think we're... Paris. Yeah, they think... I mean, if you, they really call themselves... Her, what is it? Parisians. You don't call yourself a Parisian. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, there's a reason why we don't call ourselves that. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> yeah. Paris. I guess so. <laughs> it doesn't roll off the tongue as much. Yeah. 
All right. Well, that was actually that's pretty pretty interesting. If you're yeah. American, uh, shout out. Or I guess get watch well out traveled, me. man. I love traveling. Yeah, now, go man. somewhere. I mean, that's, I hate when people just say Yo, you need to travel. Y- like, y'all need to go to China. I think that'd be really fun. I, w- I did Japan. I did. Yeah, I did I Tokyo. To. How was okay, it? Now, uh, Iwakuna. I did like five Oof. cities in in, in Tokyo fun. in Japan, rather. Dude, I went to. We stopped at China with Jay and Trey, and they're like two tall, like yeah. tall black dudes, right? And people were staring at them. Like oh yeah, coming to take pictures with them. Yeah, yeah. One they of them called. Like, oh. One of them called him James Harden. I was like, Oh, oh my god! <laughs> All black people look alike. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, like James like. Harden. Oh, James Harden. <laughs> they neither of them are even yeah. close my to that complexion. <laughs> Barcelona was dope too. Uh, but if you ever done Barcelona, it's super dope. Super I heard the music too. and culture down. Oh there my god! Dope. I was fully immersed. I was down there on sand- flip flop thong sandals. I was like, I was Ew. in there. Yeah, <laughs> poor locals. Freckled <laughs> 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 feet. They don't care if you spend the money. They don't care. Green is the color that matters down there. <laughs> That's all that matters. So green is the color that matters everywhere. everywhere. Political message, <laughs> and that is how we are going to end today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching yet yeah. another episode of The Internet is Undefeated. <laughs> and make sure you guys catch the movie Ma in mm-hmm. theaters May 31st featuring mm-hmm. Octavia Spencer. Starring. Hold on, wait. Starring. Starring. Academy Award winner. Put some bells Octavia. on it. Mm-hmm. Put ding, ding, ding. some bells on it. Ding, ding, ding. Because yeah. that makes a difference. When you're an Academy Award winner, mm-hmm. you're, there is a baseline of what you could take for a salary. That's when and you ask people not to look at you in the eye. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's when what? you could do it, though. <laughs> That's when you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm getting into character. I, I won. Don't I'm look not me just in nominated. Yeah, that yeah. part right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So shout out to Academy Award winner Octavia, Octavia Spencer. Octavia Spencer. Like you've never seen her before. I just wanted to say like a boxer. I'm sure she's never heard her. <laughs> yeah. She's never heard her name like she's that. Like, I should box. <laughs> <Oxer. laughs> it's like, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> a special shout out to our guest in the house Yo. today, the homie Wally. Thank you. Thanks for coming by, man. Thank you guys for having me. Yeah, man. Thank you. Anyways, y'all hiring? (laughs) (laughs) And on that note, we will see you guys next week. See ya. Peace. Yo, thanks for watching another episode of The Internet is Undefeated. Make sure you like the video, share the video, and if you just want the audio, make sure you follow us on Spotify, iTunes, and Google Play.